easy is it to build a RAG app with Elasticsearch, you may ask? Today, we'll walk through the simple and exciting blog post from Elasticsearch Labs. And in just under 20 minutes, we'll build a RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation app with Cohere and Elser, Elastic Sparse Encoder model, and your domain data in Elasticsearch. How does that sound? Let's get started. The first part of this blog gives you a background on Gen AI, large language models, their limitations, approaches to enhance LLMs, and of course, uh, why we're using Cohere and Bedrock. I'd encourage you to read through all of that. Elastic has been, as you know, a leader in search and relevance, which is critical for working with large language models or LLMs in, in short. And essentially, you just get one shot, right, to prompt an LLM and deliver the right answer for your users with your data. So relevance is key and super essential. With RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation, we are able to retrieve the contextual documents in conjunction with the original input from your user to generate that relevant answer. This really helps with grounding your LLMs. We'll also be using the learned uh, Elastic Learned Sparse Encoder, or ELSER, which is an out-of-domain retrieval, uh, retrieval model trained by Elastic. And I'll go over ELSER in a bit more detail later on in the video. But first, let's go over uh, the prerequisites. So the first one is to create uh, the Elastic Cloud at account. And what you need to do uh, is uh, click on the link and create that cloud account. You'll need to make note of the cloud ID and the API key once you've done that. And uh, you need to head over to your Elasticsearch and uh, click on deployments and just make sure you're able to copy the cloud ID there. And once you have that, uh, you also need the API key. Uh, and so for that, what you can do is uh, once you're in your Elastic uh, console, you can click the hamburger menu go right down to stack management and then into security API keys and you can get the API key from here. Next, we need to get the cohere command model and make sure to follow the instructions on Amazon Bedrock to create the access and secret keys and ensure you have access to the cohere uh, command model there. So uh, the cohere command model, as you can see, um, you should have access to that to that model that you want to use. Perfect. And then while uh, we have done that, uh, you also need to make sure that you make note of the AWS region as well as the access and secret keys that you get from there. Next, we will deploy the ELSER model. So let's head on here to our Elasticsearch cloud. And um, for that, you need to go into... Um, into analytics and machine learning. And over here, once you navigate to that, go into model management. And then click on trained models. And download the model here, which is the ELSER model 2, the recommended one. I've already done that, but you can download by clicking this button and then you click the play button to deploy it. As you can see, I've already deployed this model. It'll take a little while to deploy it and uh, download it. So uh, once you've done that, make sure that uh, you know you have the you have the defaults uh, as uh, as the same and then you click on start. So that'll start your model and get it deployed. And while your model is deploying, let's look at the solution overview. So heading back to our blog here, I'm gonna show you what the uh, solution overview is all about and also give you, an, uh, give you a walkthrough of what we are trying to accomplish here today. So there are two parts to this. One is the offline data ingestion, which is basically all about how we are uh, consuming your data into Elasticsearch. So um, this part is all about ingesting your data, which can be done using a web crawler or any other ingest mechanism of your choice. The ELSER or Elastic Learn Sparse Encoder model will embed the text and store the resulting tokens from your data uh, in the Elasticsearch index, which is here. 
ELSER, as I described a bit earlier, is an out-of-domain model, uh, which means that it does not require fine-tuning of on your data, uh, making it adaptable for a variety of use cases straight out of the box. And ELSER is amazing, and you can learn more about ELSER in the links which I've provided below. Uh, ELSER basically enables you to perform semantic search. And uh, uh, what that means is basically a search based on contextual meaning and user intent rather than exact keyword matches. And uh, the way it does this is through uh, a technique called text expansions uh, to retrieve highly relevant search results. And we are using ELSER for semantic search, but depending on your use case, uh, you can choose to use hybrid search, which basically combines vector, keyword, uh, and semantic search techniques to get even better results. And then I'd encourage you to really check hybrid search out on the elastic uh, links that I have uh, linked over here below. Now let's go into the user query flow here. So the uh, this is pretty simple. The user provides a question or a query via the RAG web application in one. Step two, the RAG application generates a retrieval request initialized from the vector store Elasticsearch index. At query time, the text will be embedded using ELSER model, which we discussed, and the resulting tokens will be used to perform that text expansion query we spoke about. The retriever component of the RAG application then fetches the relevant documents from Elastic Vector Store in three. The RAG application then passes the retrieved documents or the context along with the user question or prompt to the Cohere model uh, through Amazon Bedrock. The Cohere model then generates uh, a textual response and sends it back to the RAG application in five. And the RAG application performs any required post-processing tasks. For example, it adds the source or sources to the response generated from Cohere, the user views the response in the web application. Great. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and build our RAG application piece by piece in a Google Colab notebook, which I've also linked below. And I'm just heading to that Colab, my Colab, which I need to just reconnect to. Awesome. So over here, what we can do, uh, and you can um, clone this um, later and uh, use it and examine it. You can also choose to download it. So let's examine this code in sections. Uh, so the first part of the code is basically installing all of the required packages and importing all of the modules. And as you can see, I have uh, run this already and uh, this piece is done. The second piece is to be able to uh, initialize the Amazon Bedrock client and in this piece, you will need uh, your uh, access and secret key as well as the region. And then the third piece is all about connecting uh, to Elasticsearch using the Elastic Cloud ID and the API keys, which you noted earlier. We use Elasticsearch Store to connect uh, to our Elastic Cloud deployment um, and create that index called Workplace Index. Since we're using ELSER, we will use the sparse vector retrieval strategy to retrieve the top K results. And the reason we do that is simple because ELSER is a sparse uh, retriever model. The next few steps, we read your data set and we deserialize it. So as you can see, we read the data set here. We then go ahead and deserialize it and we chunk it and uh, we split and chunk the documents into passages in order to improve the retrieval specificity and to ensure that we can provide multiple passages within the context window of the LLM prompt. And here, as you can see, we are chunking uh, the documents uh, into 800 um, uh, chunk size and with an overlap of 400. And we're using a simple splitter, but LangChain offers uh, more advanced splitters, if you wish, to reduce the chance of uh, any context being lost. And for our data set, we have, uh, let me show you what the data set looks like uh, that we're using today. So we have a bunch of documents here. 
And these are basically HR policies. And we have the content field with details. We have um, the summary which of the HR policy. And we have a name field, created and update timestamps, the category, as well as roles and permissions of who can access. All right, so coming back to uh, where we left off. The final step over here uh, is, or the last to final step is to index the data into Elasticsearch using the Elasticsearch store. Awesome, and once we do that, we initialize the Amazon Bedrock LLM. And in the Amazon Bedrock uh, instance, we pass the Bedrock client and the specific model ID, which is cohere command in our case. Now that we have the passages stored in Elasticsearch and the LLM is initialized, we can now ask a question to get the relevant answers and the sources. We have chosen to ask the, for, uh, the first question here, which is, what is our work from home policy? Optionally, you could choose to add a re-ranking step as well to the search pipeline, which can further improve the ranking of the results provided. For convenience, I have included all of these code snippets we just reviewed into a Python script, which you can download and run. And let me show you how. So in the links below, I have included, um, I have included uh, a link to this Python script, which you can download from here. And then you can actually store it into a folder. Uh, I have just stored it uh, on my desktop and uh, in a folder called Elser, which I will now CD into. There you go. And now uh, I will just create an alias uh, for Python just to make it easier to use Python. Awesome. And now let's follow best practices and create a virtual environment. And next, we need to activate this. Cool. Now we can silence the Python warnings. And the first step here, as we saw earlier, was to install the Langchain packages, which we'll need to do here. And once that's done, we can just run that Python um, rag script, which we downloaded into the folder. So now we get a chance to use all of those keys, which we stored earlier, starting with the Amazon Bedrock access key, and now the secret key. And we have to provide the default region, which is US West 2 in my case. Now it's asking for the cloud ID, which you have copied and you can paste it here. Now copy your API key. Cool, and now it's off to creating the chunk. And while this is happening, and once it's done, we can explore the data we indexed in Elasticsearch. Cool. Sometimes the connection may time out, and in that case, you just run it again and make sure that the model, the ELSER model is deployed. So I'm just gonna quickly enter uh, my keys here very quickly. the region. And the deployment. Yeah, there's absolutely no need to panic. 
I can just run it again and it works. Cool. And now you can see that it's prompting me for the Cohere model, which I'll copy and paste. And there you go. So uh, once this is indexed, uh, we, uh, the data is indexed and the retriever has executed. Uh, let's just take a look at what we queried. So our question was, what is our work from home policy? And you can see that we have received the answer and the sources. So awesome, well done. And now let's just explore the data we indexed in Elasticsearch real quick by heading over to Elasticsearch. So all you have to do is click the hamburger menu and go into DevTools. And over here, if you remember, we used um, an index called workplace underscore index. So you can just use this command get and the workplace index, and then you can explore that data in the index, which you have already indexed by clicking the button here and you can see the number of documents that got indexed. Now we just change this to search to see the data. And you can see that the text was indexed as well as all of your vector tokens, which we discussed earlier, are here in the Elasticsearch index. Awesome. So in summary, um, yeah, so I'm just you know, showing you that overview slide here again. And in summary, we walked through how to create that RAG web application using Elasticsearch, Cohere, and open source Python packages like Langchain today. We were able to produce highly relevant results with the Elastic's ELSER um, sparse encoder model. And depending on your use case, you may explore using hybrid search, uh, which basically combines vector, keyword, and semantic search techniques to get even better results. And check out the hybrid search um, links, which I have uh, linked below. And hope you enjoyed this content as much as I did. Um, stay tuned and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.